Look at this posery. Morning, folks. Corn harvest 2020 is commenced. Let's head over to the dryer, see what things are going on. Harvest sunrise, can't beat them. So hey guys, this is the first time on our farm we've ever used a dryer system. Something like this. This is what you call a dryer. Some of them look different. This one's called the mixed flow dryer. This is from Nico. Um, this one's rated at 1400 bushel an hour for like five points. So it's not overly huge, but we've never ever really dried on our farm. And the, the idea behind it for us is to maybe start on a few fields a little earlier than we possibly could before uh, and just have that option. Uh, typically we let it dry in the field most of the time down to at least 18 and then we'll stick it in the bin. I uh, manage it that way with regular aeration fans. But now last week we started it up. I uh, had a few issues just kind of figuring it out. And but right now everything works pretty good on it. The only issue we have left is up at the top there's those white deals. They're called rotary sensors. And every once in a great while, one of them doesn't read correctly and it won't fill the, the dryer back up. And so they're supposed to be sending us new ones to hopefully fix that issue, or it could be the cable. Uh, so hopefully we get that figured out. That's the only thing that will cause a hiccup every so often. So what this does here, this is the brains behind the whole operation and I'm still figuring it out. So I'm not gonna be an expert on it, but the gist is, the way it's set up is we have a wet leg and a dry leg. We're using the west bin as the, the wet bin and the east bin as the dry bin. And we left a cone of dry corn in there uh, when we sucked it out so we don't have wet corn all around the outside. But the only corn we're putting in there is probably only 19, the wettest being 20%. A lot of it's in that 18 to 19% range. So we're not doing really wet corn right now. Uh, the reason why is we just didn't want to have a bunch of super wet corn because you could get in the mess in a lot in a big hurry if you do that. So we're drying some stuff uh, down and uh, this one's sending it back to the dry line. But the idea is it sucks it out of the wet bin, goes up the wet leg, and then it dumps it down in this dryer. Well if we want to dump at the same time with our pits, that'll go up and it's kind of an overflow. What can't get into the dryer will just spill over into the wet leg or wet bin, that way you're not overfilling anything. Um, as you can hear those motors kick on, right now it's asking for grain to go up that leg and fill the dryer. So that's how that's doing that, there's sensors. It's amazing these electricians, how they figure all this sensor stuff out. But. So right now it's coming out of that, that system right there, going up this leg, filling this dryer. And this dryer's running all the time in this auger. And it's going into this bin right here where we're holding it. So we consider that the dry bin. So maybe some year down the road we'll actually designate like a funnel bin for a wet bin. But right now, last year we weren't even planning on putting a dryer in, but we thought we might need one. So uh, we decided to set this up as a wet bin. And I don't know what we'll do in the future. It depends on how much drying we ever do. Uh, sometimes you can spend more money on doing wet stuff, like a wet bin and stuff, where you might be money ahead to put in just another big bin and just kind of do what we're doing here. So that's something we'll have to figure out in the future. But but these mixed flow dryers, I think they they pump out a few more beef wings than like the regular screen ones. The advantage of these is I've heard, this is all from what we found out, is you don't have to clean these. These are just, they blow out the little triangles. So you can see here, this is the dry corn coming out. And these are actually open, so I can pull the corn out of there. I don't know if you can see it. That's where all those bees wings are getting blown out by these big fans with heater motors on them. So as you notice, we're not done, completely done with our bin site. We're kind of building it as we go, kind of seeing what we need, what we like and what we don't like about the area before we start like coming in here and pouring a bunch of concrete. But we know we want to add more concrete in some of these areas, maybe build a small shelter. Um, we're kind of concerned about building a shelter over the controls. We didn't know if we'd like opening doors and stuff. 
So this is all kind of a work in progress still. So if you see stuff, uh, so there's some things we like and some things we don't like, but we kind of wanted to do it as we go just to see what we would use. Wife's just going by. Dropping off little man Garrett. So yeah guys, we're on baby watch. Anytime now we could have our little girl. To be praying. Hopefully everything goes okay. Man, that's good for these things. So the problems I have with it shutting down, it, it, what's nice is these things got quite a few sensors, but it doesn't always mean it's great. I got cameras kind of set up so I can watch it from my phone. And I'm supposed to be able to monitor this uh, device that screen over there through my phone. It's just not completely set up yet, and so I'm waiting on Nico to get that done. So I should be able to see the drying process on that screen from my phone whenever I log in. Uh, when it would shut down, I was actually gone from it Saturday when it shut down. What it does, it just goes below that moisture sensor, and it reads it's not showing any moisture, so then it just kind of shuts the whole thing down. So. That's what it's doing, but I'm going to leave it for now, kind of monitor it with the cameras and try to go pick some corn here. Morning folks, sorry I fell off the face of the earth yesterday after that whole dryer explanation, but nope, filling trucks. We moved up north to our Mason City Farms. We got a few shorter season hybrids up here. So it's a little bit further away from our original farm site. Uh, so we're hauling this all into town. We got six trucks going today. Hopefully that's enough. We've used seven before up here. Nope, pretty soon we'll be getting started here and we'll be picking corn. So we utilize the RTK network, which has a base station and landmark implement. We use their uh, group of base stations. And so we're actually far enough away from our home site that we have to change the the base station and so what we do is we come in here and I have to look up uh, the settings for the RTK and I have to reconfigure it so I come in here and I re reconfigure it I gotta find the the RTK setup I come into the mobile app but what I'll do is I'll reset this and then that'll um, change the address so it'll read off the closest the nearest uh, RTK station so I'm gonna do that now and now we be picking corns. Picking corn is a little bit different beast than uh, picking beans. You got a lot more volume of product that we got to get away. Uh, right now we run two grain carts with two combines and they're 1100-ish, maybe bigger carts. Uh, they're rated at 1100, but that's the perfect size for our trucks. Um, we really have to squeeze a little bit on, quite a bit on to get to uh, fit into a triple axle truck, but we're getting it done today. So our goal is when we're running combine, <coughs> excuse me, when we're running, we like to always be filling one at a time while the other one's filling at a truck. Uh, that's the way we usually like to be the most efficient. So, because if you fill two up and have two full at the same time and you only get one truck back, well then you kind of are stuck at a standstill. So it seems like when you have one truck dumping and one truck in the field filling, that's, that's about the best way to do it for us. We do farm some pretty uneven terrain. And so it's a little more different beast. You always gotta be watching out and make sure you're not gonna get in a situation where you whack your auger against the cart or unload. And uh, you always wanna be 
a low net of cards somewhere it seems like especially in high yielding corn uh, just to stay ahead of things so once I'm done dumping on him he's gonna flip a u-turn and start picking up the other combine and then you just re repeat all day long Pete and repeat there we go I'm empty and if he's paying attention he'll turn around there he acknowledges. He's probably going to utilize the more space because we're breaking a new land here. During harvest you'll hear us say land. Well, we always like to keep our augers open so we can be dumping either way instead of going back and forth. What we'll do is make a big O shape. Kind of like NASCAR, we always like taking left turns. And the idea behind that is we're always having to dump usually, so uh, that way this auger is always exposed to an open area where we can dump while moving on the go. We're kind of doing that whatever is dry thing, and so we act, that's why we moved up here. I probably mentioned that. We're just looking for dry enough corn and moisture. And what moisture content is in corn is how much it's holding inside that kernel. The ideal, the, the moisture that we do not get docked at is 15 even. We typically will pick anywhere from, we pick, well right now it's, it'll go below 15, but 15 to that 18% range is kind of typically what we harvest at. As you notice, I talked about with the dryer, what that allows us to do is maybe to pick a little bit weather corn. Uh, without worrying about it spoiling in our bin. So that's kind of what we do in our area. I know a lot of areas like up north, they don't get that luxury of it drying down in the field, and so that a lot more of them will have dryers up north with a lot bigger dryers. That's just because they have to dry every kernel that comes through the machine because they may only get down to 23 in some in a given year. I don't know, maybe even wetter. You have to ask them guys, what are you talking to me for? So Brother Tom got empty. He's sending Dad back my way. I probably might be able to top them off. It's nice as they have these mirrors that you can see and these bug eye mirrors that you can see your bin extension, see how full you're getting in that glass. Kind of on a side hill. Dryer corn will flow a lot easier in the cart, so you kind of got to make sure you don't get them too full because they'll spill it easy if it gets on too steep of side hill. Just things to look out for slow my combine down he's running at a set speed he kind of pulls alongside me gets an average speed and then I go back and forth since these carts are fairly long we'll call that good you're full and while he's leaving hopefully someday another car will show up and then again and then again and then again pretty much all of October and some of November Sometimes even with six trucks, you gotta wait. I think this might this might be in terms of entry wild card factor of guys. Like, kind of the big unknown here is Jordan Riley, and I'm getting the sense that bad to come here. Yeah, he got mentioned by a, a handful of guys in the last week or so as an impact player for this. It's gonna make it harder on quarterbacks to find passing lanes. It disrupts an awful lot of different things. So I'm really encouraged, and but I feel pretty good about that spot. As we get ready to go for this season. What about the on to the next field. If you're wondering, yes, the lights are bright on those tractors. They're brighter than the combines. I think the flies are trying to find something warm. So the reason why we got these tractors is when you see me, it really helps the camera lighting out a lot. So I mean, that was well worth the great investment. Yep, got everything full. Hey guys, sometime uh, in the future I may try doing a live stream from the combine. I'm not sure how that'll work. It just depends on if I have cell service and the right setting. But uh, it's something I'd like to try to do sometime just to kind of maybe answer questions as I'm going through the field. We'll see how that goes. I'm not making any promises and plus it's baby watch. So hey, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it guys and we'll catch you on the next one. See ya.